Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the Ryzen 3600X. We are overclocking it with the stock cooler that is the Wraith Spire cooler, which is this guy right here. And uh, we're gonna hop right into it. So before we get into the settings and everything that I used and the end settings that I, well, ended up with, I do wanna talk a little bit about the Wraith Spire cooler included with the 3600X because this is the new Wraith Spire and this is the old one that used to be included with processors like the Ryzen 1600 and then later on some of the ones like the 2600X. You'll notice the new Wraith Spire does not have the copper core in it. I have not had a chance yet to test how much that actually affects performance, but do be aware that the new Wraith Spire cooler isn't really that great. In fact, it's definitely a cost cutting measure that AMD went through there and I'll be checking out really how much performance we're giving up by switching over to an all aluminum Wraith Spire cooler. Now also keep in mind with the 3600X, this chip is very similar to the Ryzen 5 3600. The biggest difference out of the box is other than the clock speeds, the Wraith Spire cooler goes with the 3600X, the 3600 just gets the Wraith Stealth cooler. So as we get started here with this sort of uh, B-roll of the overclocking process, I do wanna note that if you're using an older motherboard, especially if it's not an X570 motherboard, like I'm using an X470 ASUS board, do double check to see if there's a more recent update to the BIOS. For example, I had a BIOS that was Ryzen 3000 compatible, but it came out back in May, and a few days ago, ASUS released a new BIOS that really fully supports Ryzen 3000. That earlier release was really just so that your system would boot with a Ryzen 3000 chip. The new one actually enabled all of the sensors, all of the temperature readings. Before I updated to the absolute most recent BIOS, I couldn't really do much of anything as far as monitoring goes. In fact, I couldn't even apply the settings that I changed in the BIOS and have them take effect. So if you're having any sort of issues like that, you're not seeing temperature readings and hardware monitoring software, and you're not able to get your BIOS to apply the settings that you're keying in, basically just double check to make sure that it's the most recent BIOS out there because it's highly likely that if you're having those issues, it's really just a BIOS issue and it just needs updated to the most recent version. All that being said, the highest clock speed I was able to really even attempt was 4.3 gigahertz at 1.365 volts. And at that voltage, my computer here just wasn't having any of it whatsoever. The 3600X, while it would boot into Windows, as soon as I would open Cinebench, it would just crash out and it was over it and done. So I eventually went backwards a little bit and was able to get a Cinebench run in at 4.25 gigahertz at the same voltage. But then when I loaded up IDA64 and ran a just very general stress test, uh, again, it was not having any of it. The 3600X crashed pretty much immediately. Upping the voltage a little bit did remedy that. However, it still crashed after about, I don't know, I think it was three or four minutes into it. So eventually I settled on these settings. I went with a 4.2 gigahertz all core overclock which gave me a really solid Cinebench score. At stock settings, I was seeing Cinebench finish at about a 1550 score. With this overclock, I was seeing a little bit of a boost on the all core. That being said, the single threaded performance was also decent, but not necessarily any better than it would have been at just plain stock. Now looking at temperatures here, I did see in my just general stress test that this uh, Wraith Spire cooler, even though it doesn't have the copper core, which I'm still a little bit irked about, the good news with this Wraith Spire cooler is temperatures were under control. They were in the high 70s. The room was what I would call room temperature is probably about 72, 73 degrees Fahrenheit. So obviously if the room did get a little bit warmer, we would see those temperatures climb just a little bit, but the temperatures were perfectly acceptable. And more importantly, they were stable through the 10 minute stress test, which is enough for me to say that this overclock with these settings that you're seeing now is likely good enough for a day-to-day -day usage, especially if you're just gaming and doing some light productivity. Now with that 10 minute stress test passed, I will say that as soon as I turned off the other stress test and only hit the FPU on this processor, the stress test crashed immediately. And I'll also say that there is a little bit more headroom in the voltage department if you had a better cooler. So if you're willing to invest a little bit more money into a cooler, something maybe like a Fuma 2, which is the probably the cooler that I'm gonna be pairing my uh, 3900X with, it is possible you could get this more stable by pushing more voltage through it 
It's just not something that I was able to test with a stock cooler because the thermals were getting fairly high already. Pushing any more voltage through it was not gonna help with stability enough. I was gonna have to add a significant amount of voltage to get this thing stable in the FPU test based on how quickly it crashed. So that's just my experience with the 3600X and with overclocking across all the cores. I'll say that for the average person, you are gonna see a little bit of an advantage in multi-threaded workflows by overclocking across all your cores. However, I don't know that it's enough to really push your system and I don't know that it's really enough and there, there's enough headroom in these chips to really go out and buy a really high-end cooler. Now, these things are loud. These Wraith Spire coolers are not the quietest coolers out there. It is worth your money, at least in my opinion, if you're looking for creature comforts, to spend a little bit of money on a better cooler purely so you can have a quieter experience and maybe some slightly better temperatures. But just understand, even if you're adding water cooling to this system, even if it's a custom loop, you're really not gonna be getting your clock speeds a whole lot higher than about that 4.2 gigahertz across all cores, at least on the 3600X. Maybe some of the better bin chips, you will be able to hit higher clock with but it looks like 4.2 4.3 is about the limit of these chips and you're seeing a drastic loss of return on your investment if you're investing a lot of money into cooling especially if you're really just targeting higher clock speeds now if you're looking for just aesthetics then hey go for it custom water loops all the way that's great. Just understand that your clock speeds aren't really gonna benefit much from it. But that's the video. I do wanna hear from you guys. What do you think about the Ryzen lineup here, especially these R5s, the Ryzen 3600 and 3600X? Let me know your thoughts down below. And of course, if you like the video, hey, give it a like, share, subscribe, and comment. All those things are helpful to the channel. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.